if I want to go back through history, my favorite players from each period, if we talk about like one of the top guys who is my favorite guy to watch, it goes something like this. Swag and very early on, Dennis from LGB. I don't know why his rifling on train was just my favorite. Then we move forward a little bit. It's Flusha from the Fnatic period, won the first major as well as went on to win three in total, three majors club. Flusha, Crims, JW, all with three majors. Just recounting this history is interesting because when we talk about Fallen, we talk about the fact that Flusha, after playing a Pantamera Games online cup or something like that in Sweden, ended up donating some of his prize pool to help Heed Stars, formerly Kaboom Esports, gave them a chance to get to 2015 Katowice closed qualifier, where they actually qualified and made top eight. Flusha donated them $1,000. And in 2013, I casted my first CSGO LAN and I slept on a pair of pants and I cast it for free and I ate hot dogs every day. We weren't making much money back then. So even though he was a top player, he was a top player in a very small thing, a sizable donation from Flusha. Coolest part is it paid off so quickly. Kaboom Esports turned into Luminosity. They got signed with Fallen as the IGL and they got top eight at ESL Cologne 2015, as well as Katowice 2015. Flusha was a guy who had a whole period of time where it was just cheating accusations coming at him. Left, right, and center was nonstop, man. Let me make this about me for a second, okay? This is a terrible time for me because I was streaming on Twitch every day and in my chat, nonstop, I mean, I'm not joking. Every five minutes, a new question. Do you think Flesh is cheating? Come on, man, how come you won't admit Flesh is cheating? All casters know Flesh is cheating and they won't say anything. Comments just like that. It was this open secret. There were pros in interviews that were saying outright he was cheating. I heard that Flesh, when he played at a major at the time, the cheating accusations were coming out. Someone in the lunch line called him the F word and it's not the fuck word. It got serious. It was so bad for the integrity of the game. That's when we learned how important it was that cheating is stopped, that cheating is impossible. And now you don't see this as much. <clears throat> and the craziest part of all, if he had a pair of these beauties on his head, he would have got banned instantaneously. Hey, I'm Joe D'Audio here to tell you about a pair of canes that go farther than Long A on overpass. All right. There's two things I love. More than CSGO audio, it's Gabagool and my beautiful Guma. Hey, but that's between me and you, eh? All right, listen, if you got the scratch, don't let good audio be an itch, all right? Buy Cal Zones, I mean A Zones. Hey, I didn't say you could laugh. Oh, once in a while, I'll get an email from someone, right? And they'll say things like, why is everyone keeping it a secret that all pros cheat? And the only thing I can think is that they may be not very good at CSGO and so they watch pros play. They see people with perfect crosshair placement come out and clear an angle and see someone behind a wall. You know, not considering that these guys play these maps thousands of times in their careers and they also play versus the same players over and over again and they're the best of the best. And so there's a high likelihood that you're gonna see someone on X-Ray. I can only assume they can't imagine how pros can be as good as they are. And then when they go back and watch the demos and slow them down, they saw these weird lineups. And sometimes it is random chance. Sometimes it does look weird. I will agree. But the funniest part about all this was it got to the point that entire organizations were openly accusing and making fun of Flesh of cheating. Hellraisers with Angel on the team, they proposed a contest and they said, if you can go back through Angel's demos and make a cheating compilation, just like people have made for Flesh and make it look like Angel cheating, then you win this skin. And the joke from their end was that you can't do it because Flesh is obviously cheating and there's no other pros that you could go back and watch their demos and say, you can get this many cheating clips out of. I think the person who won, the craziest part about this video was the fact that you watched it and it did look like Angel was cheating. It really did. You know, that, that was the moment to me that I felt most vindicated on behalf of Flesh, where I was like, listen, you bring up 10 clips, one looks bad, nine are just supporting evidence. And if you take out the nine, then the one's not even that bad. But when you look back, you go, well, I found 10 clips. And then we realized that people were doing that for everybody. Demo banning people is, is such a ridiculous thing to do. And Flusher was never banned. It was really bad when this player named KQLI got this jumping shot at a major and Kaylee got banned, SF got banned. And then there was so much conspiracy floating around about who was cheating and how all pros cheat and everything like that. Emilio got banned like live in a match, in a professional match. But since then there's been 
been nothing like that. And the major after Flusha was experiencing so much of the cheating accusations. First of all, he went on to win. Second of all, I had this clip where I told the story about Olaf Meister and how I ate Wagyu with Olaf Meister at Blast Miami in 2019. And I told him to his face, I said, listen, you're a great player, but I always thought Flusha was better than you. And in the two majors that you guys won together, I thought Flusha should have been MVP of both. If you go back and look at the stats on HLTV, you can only see rating and Olaf had a way higher rating than Flusha did. But when I was watching the games, I remember feeling like I thought Flusha was the better player. Either way, I just thought it was funny. The reason I think that he got so many cheating accusations, well, the meme is that he lifted his mouse. So Flusha is the kind of guy who doesn't care. He doesn't care what other people think. He doesn't care that people have accused him of cheating. And in my opinion, it is because of the way he plays. I think he's just the smartest player to have ever played the game. I really believe that. I think he was the ultimate proof that you actually don't have to have good aim to be a top tier elite professional CSGO player. Look at his stats on Cato. This is the most competitive era outside of, you know, the Astralis era. Flush's clutching could match up to Zipix in 2018. His nade usage was Astralis-esque. There was a YouTuber named Elma Putty. He made multiple videos about Flusha's utility usage. It was so good. Nobody else was using HEs that way until three to four years later. Flusha in a 1v1 could play the same situation a thousand times and make it look different every single time. This is one of my favorite aces. If you guys want to watch this, an incredible play. You have to wonder if Fnatic are going to be able to capitalize on that. For now, we have the harassment coming in towards the A site and indeed Flush has made his way into slope. So if Fnatic choose to go B, he can try and cut off a rotation. If they choose to go A, he can make the split harder. He's going to allow Rubino to make his way into CT spawn and see if he can punish elsewhere. He can see a player on platform towards A if he looks over there towards Long Story. And indeed, there it is, Tennessee going down and Flusher has decimated everyone. Three people, he's taken the head off the animal there and it's config left alone now, one versus two. There is potential for him. But first he has to deal with this AWP. Is he going to continue to push in CT spawn? He's got an M4 and one flashbang versus two. Flusher picking up an AK now, looking to get his ace here. The flash coming in from his teammate, but Config fast already. And there it is, Flusher going to wreck the entire team here. Incredible. The clips that he got displayed how great he was in all aspects of the game. When it came to Lurk, he plays like this. This is where he specialized. Check out this Lurk play 2018, Cato ace. It was the first of two. He got a round 30 ace right after this to push it into overtime and Fnatic won. It's like pressure doesn't exist for Flusher. Check this out. Or perhaps undetected. Maybe this has a chance to him. Who knows? Olaf will have no idea that he's already made his way in. Needs to be quick to find that kill, however. Definitely spots him. Oh, not only does he spot him, thank you very much! Oh, wow. No way. No way Lined he wins up. this. And not only that, he's caused a full rotation from Ivy, from Rain, and sort of Zeke, inside of Z Connector. Flush gets one more kill on this. Lecro's got the whole map to play with. Oh he's hoping that Flush can anchor this position down, but he has the option to go back to A and look at Flush. Go, oh my God. This would be a harsh reset on 14 rounds for Fnatic. And that smoke is tantalizing! Oh! Flush! He's gonna clean out Connector! It's just Nico yet again who has to try and pull it back, and he's got the AK-47. Some utility in a kit to do so, and Lecro is taking his sweet time to make sure he figures this out. Now, this is interesting because now it's return favor. Nico snuck around behind Flusha, and he could actually spoil the whole plan as sneaky as Flusha was. No way! Oh my god! That is one of the most impressive clutches you will ever see. So yeah, insane. Again, like pressure doesn't exist. And you can see in the second ace, if we played the end of it, it's not about aim for Flusha. It's perfect positioning every time. And that's why I think the cheating accusations were so prevalent with him. You look at the way he moves and it's like, man, I could do that. But his timing was perfect. He was such a purebred Counter-Strike player in that sense. Counter-Strike as an FPS is partially about mechanics, but if you compare it to other FPS games, you know, we're not considered the GOAT FPS because the mechanics are the hardest. It's up there, but our aim is pretty flat overall. It's mostly about crosshair placements, flicks if you have to, but it's about shooting people in the back. It's about deception. It's about positioning. So many other things except for aiming alone, and it's never been the case that the best aimer in the world has been the best player. Never. Flush is such an anomaly because he might be one of the least talented talented mechanical players in CSGO, one of the smartest players in CSGO, one of the best utility usage players in CSGO, and that's somebody whose era ended in 2015, and you can still say that's true. And he's also somebody who got better at almost every single major that he played. Every single one of those years, he had better stats at majors than he did on land. He got a buff. The cheating accusations in the middle of all that, the amount of mental resilience Flusha must have had to be able to focus on the game during all of that and make jokes about it, you know? When he came through with 
with the hat that said lifted after people made fun of his foot longer about the cheating accusation saying he lifted his mouse too much and then he came through and just embraced it. How could you not love the man? He ended up playing on Cloud9 for a short stint and to play on Eyeballers, I think as sort of the last dance for him in his Swedish career as a player, I, I think is really great. I hope he had a good time in sort of these closing moments, but he has gone through the most maybe of any CSGO player in terms of being berated by the community for accusations and allegations of him cheating that were never proven. When the Olaf pass comeback happened on overpass with Flusha on the team, their team literally dropped out because of hate and they felt bad about the way in which they won the game and they felt like they were robbing their opponents and they just felt all the pressure and scrutiny and they were the villain on top of being the best team. If Fnatic were the villains, Flusha was the eye of Sauron himself. Literally the most hated and feared and despised player for so long on top of being the best and might be also the most robbed player ever. You know, in 2014, the most controversial number one of HLTV ever came out. Flusha over Get Right was something where Flusha had better stats in almost every single category in 2014. But Get Right, of course, won his major. Get Right ended up being the number one player that year. But anybody who watched CS that year felt like it was Flusha. Flusha, man, he's really been through it and who knows if he was somebody who was supported and cherished more and not just you know randomly criticized to the point of death threats and whatever how much more he could have done i mean we'll never know but i think all of those scars and calluses are what makes flush's story so special and i think it's great that he'll be remembered as somebody who took all the memes in stride as well as someone who gave us some of the best moments in counter-strike history and someone who i think was so far ahead of the game with some of the least amount of talent pretty incredible a sweet legend, a Counter-Strike legend through and through, one of my favorites of all time, no doubt, and someone who I hope will live on in people's memories for a very long time as well, because he is a very much a part of this game as uh, any of your other favorite pros in history.